Hey there, it's Pete over at the Sound Player Sun today. We are checking out Lost Guitar from Westwood Instruments. Westwood Instruments are back with the third in their Lost series, with the focus at this time being on my personal favorite instrument, the electric guitar. Both Lost Piano and Lost Synth establish a perfect formula of great sampling, incredible sound design, and the ability to create your own sounds, all wrapped up in the Westwood Instruments Lost engine. Lost Guitar is an electric exploration of our six string friends, ranging from delicate pads, distorted strikes to pulsing bass lines and experimental timbres. Lost Guitar downloads at 8.67 gigabytes and features over 300 presets to get you started. It runs in the free contact player and is NKS compatible. It's currently on sale along with the other Lost Instruments at £69. So we also have Lost Synth and Lost Piano and I can tell you they are both fantastic instruments as well. In this video, we're gonna check out the sounds and the features of Lost Guitar, and then I've thrown it into the all-important composition. And I have to say, I had an absolute blast composing with Lost Guitar. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Westwood Instruments for sending over a copy of Lost Guitar so we could make this video. While we do get the instruments for free, it does not in any way cloud our thoughts, ideas, or judgments on the instrument. We're just working composers who want to give you our opinion of these wonderful new instruments. So without further ado, let's check out Lost Guitar. And here we have Lost Guitar from Westwood Instruments loaded up in the native instruments free complete control player. And why am I excited? Well, let's just take a moment to really appreciate the gorgeousness of this GUI. Now that is a gorgeous GUI. We can tell straight away we've got two layers, we've got A and B, and then we have a control dial in the middle, which is for the blend. And then we have a small one underneath. We've got all these different ways we can adjust our sound. We also have a motion and a mood control. And then we have these four different tabs where we can further adjust our sounds. And if you decide you just wanna see the potential this instrument has or create your own or have some jumping off points you can get lost which sounds a bit harsh but really it is the westward instruments term for randomize get lost in the instrument and i love that just the whole design the aesthetic i just think it's absolutely stunning but it's clear and that is the main thing now there's no point having a lovely looking instrument unless it sounds great and Lost Guitar I've spent quite a few hours with it and obviously I've done the composition already it sounds better than great <laughs> there we go mincing my words today it sounds phenomenal it sounds amazing and I'm going to explain why by using these different presets so we have these categories we've got start here we've got single sounds we've got blends we've got double blends we then have motion we've got memories we've got double blends and members and then we have some shorts and finally some experimental sounds and the reason it sounds great the sampling is beautiful so let's just start off with the first preset so it's a clean guitar and it has some rhythms and memories <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Now, if I use the sustain pedal, it's just gonna sound a bit thicker and we get those memories sort of coming through a bit more. Sounds lovely. And then we, of course, have the mod wheel. What does the mod wheel do? So if I was play the note and hold it, and then I play it with the mod wheel up. So I'm hearing some very, very subtle change in the effects and the automation of said effects. So we're gonna explore that a bit more because they do sound quite similar, but let's find out. So we're gonna start off with the start here. So we've got a single guitar with some delay. Yeah, 
It sounds beautiful, and the sampling is wonderful. It sounds like a guitar, but it sounds like a guitar that has been uh, sound, had sound design processes put on it, which is cool. So we've got movement and texture next. <laughs> Beautiful. It's very, very jangly and doing some very, very nice things. Uh, let's just go for. I'm going go for big soft pad. Um, I'm not going to play in G for this one. Okay, so I feel like the module is doing something slightly there, um, but I can't be sure to be honest. Hmm. Anyway, that is a pad, and then we have uh, it's a different type of rhythm. So you can see, it's not just a guitar. I rest my case, that sounds awesome. serious 80s vibes there. Uh, wonderful. And then we have a dark pulsing pad. It is pulsing and it is dark. So there we go. Now, um, I'm just gonna jump in. You can see each of these folders, you have different subfolders as well. So if I was going to single sounds and movements, um, don't blink, I believe. <laughs> So it's very, very creative as well. 
uh, which is very, very cool. Now, I'm, I'm just really interested to see, did I get the name of it right? So absolutely not even close, Dust Bunnies. Um, while I'm making these reviews, uh, we, I'm trying to think. I, I got a comment after my last one, and it said, uh, it's a really, really well-written, lovely comment, so it's not a complaint at all, and it just says, like, we really, really need to see the keyboards. And if I'm zooming in or chopping off a little bit of the screen, then I can't see the keyboard. So from time to time, I may just use the magnifier, but you can see we have the keyboards. Um, the comment was later deleted, uh, and again, it was perfectly fine, so I totally agree, you need to see the keyboards. Um, but the, uh, uh, the the keyboard actually wasn't cut off, it was only just like the very sort of small part of it. So I thought I'd address that, but um, it's because my eyes aren't too good, and I'm actually finding it quite interesting. So I'm using different accessibility features of Windows and Native Instruments, uh, Complete and Cubase. And yeah, it's um, it's very, very interesting that uh, like how you can use these ideas. So using something like the magnifier, it's just Windows and Plus, but you can bring up um, a magnifier and you can read everything that's going on in the instruments as well if you need to. So there we go. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, so that's single sounds. Let's go for just a rhythm uh, chopper. Okay, so great for underscore, tension music, etc. Lovely. It sounds a bit like an organ, that one. That's cool. So that's some single sounds. And again, you know, to, to go through 300 of these will take forever. So I'm not. I'm just going to play a couple. So I've got chimes. <laughs> Again, sounds amazing. Um, so these are the blends, by the way. So let's do some rhythms. Yeah, I mean, that's beautiful, isn't it? Lovely. Um, then we've got some, uh, sorry, some blends. Um, I'll, I'll play a texture. I'm going to call that the Phantom Zone. I'm not even going to check. I'm just going to presume that I'm right. I mean, that is gorgeous. It really is stunning. Uh, then we've got some uh, double blends, and these are dark and light. I'm actually going to play a light one. Absolutely lovely. I've uh, got some motions, so uh, I was going to go for a deep motion. I love those harmonics.
That's brilliant. So you can hear all of these different sounds. Um, let's go for a shallow one. Not sure what's going on there. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So go for some memories. Now, if I recall, these will have some gorgeous, like sparkly sounds going on. Again, that's beautiful. So it really does range from beauty. That there's a decay gun on there. That's cool. And I did actually hit the wrong key when I went to move my mouse. So um, yeah, that's one of those uh, cool sounds. But yeah, th these are just amazing. <laughs> So a good harmonic there, a good, great word. It's like describing something as nice. It sounds wonderful. So I'm just, just trying to hear different layers of sound. So if I'm sort of towards a high range. You've got that amazing delay going on. And then lower down for playing E as well. Like you can really appreciate the quality of sampling. Let me hear that. No, well, not when I do that, but hey. Oh, goodness. Goodness, goodness, goodness. So we've got double blends and memories. Um, I'm going to do a dark one, and then I'll do a light one so you get an idea. Yeah, I mean, how creative is that? That is just stunning. Absolutely stunning. we will do a light one. That looks like pond to me. I'm just going to go for my thingy. Pluto. Pluto. What does Pluto sound like? This is a light one. Sorry, I'm having quite a lot of fun. Um, I'm, I'm actually sitting, grinning away while I'm playing these. I, I just love them. <laughs> That's got like an octave delay going on. I mean, how cool is that? Goodness. And then we got experimental. Tremolo. Love it. It sounds a bit like a prepared guitar there. So rewind. I'm gonna do one more. Um Circuit burnt, I want to say. I don't know. Sounds lovely. B 
beautiful. Now, let's just go into... Um, I'm going to go just to this one. Double guitar with delay. Now, the reason I've gone to this one, you can actually see this dial is all the way to the left. If I bring it to the right, it actually would bring in the second layer, which is turned off. So now if I turn that on... There's our second layer. So this dial controls the layers. Now everything is assignable to um, different CCs. So I've actually already assigned it uh, to a spare fader I've got. So, um, very, very cool. Now, we've got all of these different uh, controls, which are very, very standard. But, of course, you can choose the different uh, sound you want for your main, uh, sorry, for your A or B layer. Um, of course, I've, uh, where are we? I've got that going on, haven't I? I've somehow just managed to kill the sound. So, we're going to just quickly reload there. Not everything always goes to plan, and I've just worked out why, because I've, um, yeah, yeah, I moved the wrong fader. My fader is actually quite far to the left of my MIDI controller, so uh, I do apologise. Okay, so all these different controls, and then you can see here, uh, again, different sort of levels of different attributes you can control, and then we've got the motion engine, and uh, we've got the mood. So turn the motion on. So it's having a little bit of fun. Adjusting the mood and different sounds. I added a chorus. So, of course, you've got to make sure you do turn these on. So, I'll go back to the motion controls. So, we've got some cool motion going on there. And then, done is, so we've got a main page, and then we have uh, for each layer, we've got all of these uh, again, different uh, effects, which is very cool and even more effects and this controls the memories this is like uh your delays and different sound it's, it's very very intricate it's not just like putting a, a single delay and slapping it on these are all like really sort of um interestingly programmed presets and patterns so you can play around with those and then finally we do have reverbs delays etc so uh yeah very very cool instrument um lots of controls now i don't want to spend Age is just doing sound design, but it's one of the instruments where you can just play around and mess around with. And yes, um, I did forget to turn little things on and off. Uh, that is completely uh, my fault. But um, you, you get the idea that you have all of this customization. And then you can click Get Lost, and you can randomize the sounds. <laughs> There you go. And because it's a contact instrument, you can save any of these as snapshots as well. So anything you create, you can use. Now that is Lost Guitar from Westwood Instruments. I absolutely love it. It sounds incredible. I do urge you to check out the Westwood Instrument demos. And of course, um, just check out the other videos. We can hear even more presets. There are 300. And I've only just scratched the surface, really, of these. But it would be a very, very long video if I started playing. Even if I played 10 from each folder, we'd be here for hours. Um, so yeah, very, very cool instrument. But what is it like to compose with? Well, I have composed with it. And um, it is one of the most fun instruments I've composed with in a while, probably because I set out wanting to do an ambient guitar piece and then I ended up 
curating something completely different. So what we're going to do is listen to the composition. I've actually made a little video with it. Um, I must have a bit of free time on my hands today, but I put a little video, made a little story. Um, don't quite know what the story is, but it's very, very positive and quite neon. So there we go. Anyway, on with the composition. And there we go. That is my lost guitar composition. And believe it or not, everything you hear, apart from the drums and the vocals and a couple of little sound effects, so some impacts and a very, very over the top drum fill, is all lost guitar. Westwood Instruments have taken the guitar and just mangled it and used lots of sound design and processing it in their incredibly magical way to create a guitar instrument that doubles up as a synth instrument, an ambient instrument, a motion instrument, just all of these wonderful blends of different sounds. However, the essence of the guitar is still there. I decided I was gonna go a little bit synth wave I don't know why, but when I was making this demo, I found some sounds. I was like, oh, that sounds like a brilliant synth. That does, that does. But these are all generated from the guitar. And of course, there's different textures and you can really, really hear the guitar pulses coming through. So let's just talk about the instruments that I'm using. Starts off, we have board line at the top, which is my real synth wavy instrument. Beautiful. And it's synth wave, so I've gone happy, major tonality, G major, this one, I think. And then we have uh, Strange Day. So you can really hear the guitar sound and the guitar sampling there, and it, it sounds like harmonics to me. And then we've got Harmless, which is kind of like a bit of a pulse. So we combine these and we do have guitar -y goodness. And it's kind of like the ambient guitar sounds. And I was actually going to make an ambient guitar track using it. And then I thought, wow, th this is really, really versatile. So I want to make something that a little bit different. And of course, when we add borderline to it, It does sound awesome. I love it. And all the delays and different effects all interlock together. And then I bring in a soft pulse. So I'm just going to play that 
as a solo instrument. I'm going to bring in Harmless. So it sounds very, very cinematic, and I'm in the process yet again of writing another Tension uh, album, and I'm actually going to be using these two sounds on there, because this, again, d creates motion, but it sounds cinematic. Um, it's great for underscore. It sounds brilliant. Now, what else is going on here? So we have some drums. These are just a standard synthwave drum instrument, and then we have some female vocals. Now, I, I use vocal loops from time to time just for a bit of fun, especially when making these demos, and... These loops, they're 140 BPM, which is uh, the same as Project, and it's just the way they're kind of articulated sound. I'm not going to say out of time, but a little bit awkward against what I'm doing, um, only in little places. But it does the trick, and of course, I've thrown on some black hole as well, dialed down the mix, um, and it sounds pretty cool. So in context, we have this. <laughs> Actually, having listened to it again, I think they fit quite nicely. It's just maybe one or two words, which is which are a little bit abrupt. But it sounds really, really cool. So if I was working with a vocalist, for example, and uh, having a top line sung, that'd be awesome. Then we have at the top, just with the melody on borderline, um, you can see I've kind of done a like a staggered thing. That's what I'm going to say. I don't know why I put it like that. But I've got this really nice sort of walk up and instead of doubling it, I've just separated it by a quarter note, as it were. Um, yeah, or a crotchet, depending where you are. So we've got this kind of thing going on. Bit of a ping pong. Now, one thing that this does really, really well is we get all of the effects hangover and at the end of the track I did automate turn these off however I've actually let these kind of blend into the middle section so if I was play this you can hear all of those pulses and it adds a little bit of dissonance into the next section now I, I was going to add a riser and a bit of an impact or an effect here, but I didn't. Um, that's one thing I would change, but this sounds absolutely awesome. Okay, so what's going on here? Only two instances of Lost Guitar got Cognitive and Memories in Reverse. Now, Memories in Reverse is a pad, and I've been a bit lazy. I've used the same MIDI, so I just played in a bunch of chords. E minor, D, and C, and C again. Wonderful. And I brought Memories in Reverse up an octave. Which complements uh, cognitive which is a little bit lower and you see I've panned these slightly left and right so this is on the right so you can see my idea of doing a ambient guitar track would have actually worked quite well when you got sounds like this going on Beautiful. So in context, we have this. Okay, so again, really, really thick sound. I've not really used a bespoke bass instrument here, which I probably would have. Um, there's something interesting going on with the drums there. 
I just want to listen to those just in isolation. It is a drum loop. I say it's interesting, it's just a drum fill that works beautifully. But you can hear how when you've got tempo sync drums, all of the effects, etc., tempo sync with it as well. So nothing sounds out of time. Which was my point of playing the drums. So there we go. Lovely stuff. And then uh, this section just repeats and we have uh, kind of like a half bar and it just stops. There is a spoken word there, which I forgot what it's. Ah, uh, yes. So at this point, I decided I was going to have a little bit of fun. Now, again, I love having these sounds just hang over. They got that awesome decay. Down the bottom, because I did the very uh, cinematic thing of having a stop on this word. Can you hear? I decided to go for a little word. Can you hear? Can you hear? And then when I was messing around, I found this really over the top synth wave drum fill and I really liked it. Lots of toms. Uh, this time I went, oh no, I'll stay with Black Hole. Um, yeah, just really, really liked it. It sounds very, very silly. I get that. Do excuse my windows bar there. Um, yeah, Memories in Reverse. Uh, I, I love that sound, so I just repeated the last section using memories in reverse as well a little bit lower and it adds to the pulses really really well absolutely love it so we kept that in there and then i fashioned an ending uh, i had to use that over the top drum fill again some kind of impact and some more words actually there's no impact at all there's an impact there i'm actually Going to add the impact and actually put it on the impact channel. So it sounds like this. Can you take me? And then some more spoken words. I love it. And I've automated out the uh, sounds, as in the effects. So if I just show um, or use automation, you can see just on these tracks, instead of having the effect hang on, I've just brought the volume down, essentially. So let's bring that over. Just so we have a nicer, um, like more controlled ending, I suppose. And that is the composition. Now, I, I tried to show off a few things. So in places like the middle section, you can do ambient guitars, showing off a couple of pulses and low end and pads. You've got a lot of underscore. And then of course, using these, um, it's, it's called borderline. It's one of the single notes, I believe. Um, yeah, so in the single sounds, uh, we've got notes and it's in there. It's um, a really, really cool sound and really, you know, has that synthwave aesthetic. And if I took it out, I mean now, because I have gone synthwavey, it does sound synthwave. I say take it out, I meant mute it. And there's a reverb tail. ambient cinema going on there 
you know, it's it's a really versatile library, and that is something that I absolutely love about Lost Guitar, and I loved the same about Lost Synth, and um, yeah, and and generally, if you've used other Westwood instrument libraries, um, you'll see how diverse they are. Like I I use their bass library um, all the time, and. I don't even use it as a bass, which sounds ridiculous. I, I use it as a sub bass on every single track that I produced ever since I got that library. And um, it's amazing. But again, within that library, there are lots of different bass sounds and uh, the way it's been treated and sound design. It's very, very cool. So Westwood Instruments just really have a knack for taking a concept. So in this case, a guitar and just running with it and creating incredibly versatile libraries. So the composing uh, experience is absolutely fantastic. It is now time for my closing thoughts about Lost Guitar from Westwood Instruments. I finish the last section with the word fantastic and fantastic is the adjective I'm going to use to describe this synth. I said synth, I, I meant guitar, instrument, library, and that is the beauty of this library. You feel like at times you are playing a synth. You feel like you're playing a guitar. You feel like you're playing a pad instrument. It's amazing the versatility that is contained within this library. And that's what I love about Westwood Instruments, that they have an idea and then they run with it and process it and all of the instruments just become these incredibly versatile tools for our composing. However, should you buy it? Because is this a library you're going to use? There's no point buying a library and it sits on your hard drive and doesn't do anything. Well, I always think about utility and I'm going to compose later and I'm going to use this on some ambient music and some tension music. So there, that is two places where you can use this and I can think of lots of different applications, video games. You might want to pair it up with an orchestra and create gorgeous nature documentary music. You might be an electronic com uh, composer. You may be a uh, an experimental sound sculpture you can create your own sounds you can use the engine just to come up with these weird and wonderful and amazing timbres it's just a fantastic instrument it's a versatile instrument it sounds great it's easy to use and for me it's just a whole lot of fun so do i recommend it yes i do pick it up you will not regret this purchase all that leads me to say is thank you once again to Westwood Instruments for sending over a copy of Lost Guitar so we could make this video. If you like what you heard, feel free to leave a like on the video and of course drop us a comment. We do try and answer every single comment. We love having discussions going on and talking about instruments. And uh, yeah, it's just been really, really cool like the last couple of weeks just seeing what everyone has to say about these wonderful new instruments. If you have not done so already, please check out our other videos on YouTube. We are over 240 videos now, which is absolutely massive considering we started just over a year ago. And yeah, I'm really, really pleased with uh, how much support we've had. And of course, our subscriber count keeps growing up. And we do keep saying we don't do this for any money. There's no advertising deals. There's no backhanders, no payments, no affiliate links. We just do it for the love of the composing community. So support us, hit that subscribe button. And of course, it will just help spread our videos further afield. And with that in mind, don't forget to pop into your studio or on your computer or on your laptop and make that gorgeous music. Until next time, take care and we'll speak again soon.